once we get into the food shortages, the confidence will be shaken in the ability for the world to grow food. Now, what does that mean for you and me? It means that the governments are going to take action to start rationing because if they can't grow it, they're going to have to tell you how much you can because there won't be enough. And then guess what happens? Everybody's on rations and then whatever's grown, you won't really know how much is coming out of the fields. And all the rest of that's going to go into the stockpiles, into little caves, in underground bases, into military bases, while they all stockpile for continuity of government. Because we are talking about a decade-long period between now and coming out of this thing in 2033 to 2035. If something sci-fi like that was going to happen, are we not in the exact right time for them to disclose, probably find extraterrestrial life, these kind of new ideas for a new world? What if you had to share your world with a couple more billion entities that are unlike you? Do you think that they would tell you that you need to start rationing your food because we have to share? As Americans seek economic protection after the most controversial election in U.S. history, Year to date in 2020 alone, gold is up 30% and silver rising more than 50%. And now we're entering a new year facing economic realities of a global economic crisis caused by COVID and political reactions. And the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 till present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. ADAPT 2030 Mini Ice Age Conversations covers changes in our climate due to a new and intensifying grand solar minimum. In the media, overlooking, downplaying, or burying cold weather changes occurring on our planet. This is in order to keep the global warming agenda steaming full speed ahead. I do this podcast and radio program because we need to begin conversations on how to adapt our food growing strategies long before 2030 as agricultural zones shift affecting global crop output but very few mainstream media outlets are talking about the most important issue of our time cold weather crop losses our sun is going through a 400 year cycle which has effects on our weather patterns as our magnetosphere weakens and the jet streams go out of flow it's not co2 it's not you it's the sun. Are you ready to thrive in the grand solar minimum? Then join me for many Ice Age conversations. I'm your host, David Dubine, creator of the Adapt 2030 Mini Ice Age 2015 to 2035 video series. Whatever happened with the movement to total globalist control in our nation given over to a globalist agenda? now unites the world on a supply chain allocation basis. Whatever was told to these politicians had spooked them enough that they decided to give up reins of power to a globalist control where now one global government is working for continuity of government in itself. I think it's because of the coupling in the Taurus wave magnetic field forming in the four gas giants in the outer solar system that matches up with Valentina Zarkova's declining and canceling magnetic waves in the sun. Same timeline, same exact year, but think about this for a second. If our sun cancels itself out in all layers of the magnetic field on the sun, it would be hard to explain how our Earth would react to it magnetically with the jet streams and the way our planet works electrically connected to the sun. But now you add an entire new magnetic field out in the outer solar system that its own magnetic field coupling Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Think about how the, the Sumerians counted in. They counted from the outer planets in. So if we have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune creating a Taurus magnetic field in its own right, we just go Mars, and then the second planet's going to be Earth with that magnetic field formed out in the outer solar system. And then the Sun... We're the third planet away, so we're going to get that sandwiching magnetic effect. So what's going to happen when the sun's canceling down to no magnetic field and then a second magnetic field's forming off Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune? You can kind of understand why the ancients were so focused on Jupiter and Saturn. It doesn't make sense for us now. But the urgency at which everything has suddenly been funneled into a global agenda for preparedness for the governments for continuity of government verifies that something larger is inbound and what you just saw happen in the last couple of days of the setup for the cryptocurrency and digital economy after this crash 
They're setting up for the new whatever it is after 2024 happening right now. And this entire agenda moving forward is nothing about preparedness, rationing for the global citizens so governments can prepare. So welcome to the new world, Ransom. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling really brave in this new world after watching the events of the last couple of days, which were predicted. And then you get to see the craziness on the Capitol. And what's even more bizarre, I was talking with some people and I said, the optics you would need, it makes you almost forget the entire summer. That was the summer of love, baby. That was the summer of love. What do you mean? That was 1000% sarcasm, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta come into it with a positive. But what it did for me was more validate that the incoming solar magnetic field declines and collapse along with these earth changes that we're seeing is definitely so far in play and so far in swing that it validated the urgency of an uptick to get a global agenda far more than an individual nation that those politicians are willing to sacrifice our nation to get onto a global agenda to get supply chains moving for continuity of government and perhaps saving of the species in their own warped minds. That's what it validated for me, at least. Yeah, I would agree with that. And also, did you notice in one day, we went back to uh, 2016, where wanting sovereignty where you live, wherever that is, was somehow a bad thing. That's a simple message they were sending out there. And I think you're right. They have everybody now, more than ever, in complete confusion about the future. And you know what they're not doing right now? Growing food. They may be prepping, but it ain't going to be for... Uh, sustained living it's going to be for the short term that's the wrong road to go down in my opinion yeah i would agree you know with all these changes that are coming in and i am going to already make a bold prediction for 2021 year of the landslide and you might say david what are you ever talking about here with ransom year of the landslide so what we're starting to see is now since Jupiter and Saturn have crossed the magic magnetic line. So these four gas giants are going to start lining up in earnest now into their configuration over the next three years. So they're not going to uncouple magnetically. What is going to happen is each individual day, they're going to get stronger magnetically coupling into its own magnetic field out there in the outer solar system. Now, as our earth gets tugged a little bit, it's called an ellipsoid. It's not a perfect sphere. And then it's going to get tugged even further out. And the first thing that's going to crack and break is the mountain stability, the things that are holding soil and rock in place, if those, they're fine at a perfect sphere, but bend a sphere out, you're gonna start to see cracks. It's almost like if you have plaster on an object, and any of you ever done any house repair, you know, sometimes you have plaster on a piece of paper or cardboard, and then it dries and solidifies. As soon as you even bend that the slightest bit, that plaster cracks. Well, this is what's happening with the shear lines in the mountains right now is the more our Earth is becoming an ellipsoid, and it's going to take several years for this to occur. It's not going to be in a single day. What you're going to find is a lot of these fracture points are starting to happen across mountain ranges and mountains. Norway, New Zealand, Madagascar, and there's been a few others around so far that have been lead slides in the last couple of days. The volcanic eruptions, obviously, that's part of it. That's an uptick. But you're going to want to focus on where all these landslides are occurring because that's a validation that the earth is stretching in an ellipsoid and these fracture cracks are now cracking to the point where the mountains aren't going to hold. And, you know, you got to think about the earth's crust is 300 miles deep. So even if you're tugging and, and effects only happen in the first top mile of the crust, this is where a lot of this stuff is actions happening right now. So year of the landslide and making a bold call right now, we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of high profile landslides through 2021. And if it is, oh my, when the blue star Kachina comes around in 2022, you are going to think the world's ending. Yeah. And I think your prediction's already right because the end of 2020 ended in a landslide and they covered it up. You think they might cover up a bunch of unstable areas where people live and not tell them that literally there's going to be gravity from our solar system pulling really strong in one direction only the two smallest planets on the other side of the sun in that time period you're talking about it is pretty bizarre i think that's what's happening to everybody's brains too it's kind of getting the gravity the stress lines 
or pulling on it. Yeah, and I wonder how much volcanic ash protection those things would give as well. I had a good discussion today with uh, somebody, and we were talking about with Merapi erupting right now and evacuations happening, and there's a couple other volcanic eruptions happening right along the equator. If, just like in the Maunder Minimum and other steps back in Grand Solar Minimums, if there's enough ash in the air, it would take about maybe eh, three to five years for it to come out. But at that point, if you don't have a greenhouse to cover your vegetables or your food or your plants or your fruit or your animals inside there, they're going to get all dusted as well. But between you and your house and, the, and going into the greenhouse or a protected area where you're farming, uh, you're going to be outside. Volcanic particles and aerosol particles coming in with uh, volcanic ash and dust in there. I mean, would those blue masks really protect you? Because you are, in a realistic fashion, going to have to walk from your house out to where the animals are. You're going to be breathing that stuff in as well. And they find a lot of problems through history of people bringing in volcanic ash, not only the sulfur dioxide, which is one of the main things, but the actual physical dust particles too. They found that through history when they would dig up graves and they would find people from, let's say, 1,000 or 1,500 years ago, their teeth were all like ripped apart because they were chewing vegetables with volcanic ash in it. So I'm wondering how much those little blue yeah. masks are going to be, uh, be usable in a volcanic ash event. According to everybody, they work great. You know, confidence is what's going to be lacking here moving forward in every way, shape, and form. See, now this is the thing that I'm calling also. Rationing is going to begin at the end of the year this year in 2021 because if the confidence is shaken in the economy once we get into the food shortages the confidence will be shaken in the ability for the world to grow food now what does that mean for you and me it means that the governments are going to take action to start rationing because if they can't grow it they're going to have to tell you how much you can because there won't be enough and then guess what happens everybody's on rations and then whatever's grown you won't really know how much is coming out of the fields and all the rest of that's going to go into the stockpiles into little caves and underground bases into military bases while they all stockpile for continuity of government because we are talking about a decade-long period between now and coming out of this thing in 2033 to 2035. Like I had been talking about this for seven years before this day arrived in, uh, you know, let's even say last year because the effects were really pronounced last year of changes that were noticeable and now we're seeing the coldest ever recorded temperatures ever in Spain. You know, and I was reading this article here. They're saying, hey, are we going back to a little ice age? Because look at Spain, because they go back to these lithographs in like 1715. And they take a look around Marseille and, and these other places where uh, they had extreme cold events, especially in the early 1600s. They're like, we were next to fires with fur coats on and our wine bottles froze next to the fire, kind of cold. And they're saying, hey, wait a second, 34 degrees below zero Celsius in Spain was the temperature. There's going to be some severe uh, mix-ups coming up, and it's going to get atrociously unthinkable how much our weather's going to fall out this year and next. And it, you're truly going to think it's a biblical event. By the time we come into 2023, 20, at the end of 22 and into 23, you're going to be questioning your reality of really what sanity is and truly how much the earth can throw at us and what kind of cataclysms are possible. Because what you're about to witness and see is we are at the cusp of the massive earth changes and you can see why governments have suddenly shifted over that they're going 100% globalist and they're going to combine all the supply chains together to make sure every government's allocated first way before the citizens. And how do you stop the citizens from preparing like you, you mentioned? People are going to prep out. They're going to stop that. They're going to ration everything before the end of the year. Once the rationing comes in, that is like the drawbridge being pulled up at the moat in front of the castle. As soon as the rations start, you know that the amount of time that you have left is nil, none. We are out of time at that point where the governments are pulling back and they're pulling every last resource with them back into their bunkers. And within 12-month period of that point, uh, you're going to be on your own. There will be no more governments around. They will have pulled back. There might be a facade of a government. There'll be no rule of law by that point. So these are things to contend with and think about. You can already see where this thing's heading. And this thing, this is exactly what I was looking for, was some kind of event like this. This was the verification. If you're looking for a giant like flare, red flare in the sky, this was it, what you just saw happen. Because those two major events happened in the same day. We just went to a full digital currency globally, which didn't make the news because the whole thing in the capital did. And you know what? We just went full globalist too. Like, yeah, that's a crazy couple days. But nobody saw the, the switch to digital currency. The new way to transact is going to be stable coins. They just approved it. That's the craziest, biggest story since the 1930s gold confiscation. Nobody's covering it.
the crypto crowd is, but no mainstream media is. The sci-fi movie has just started with all of this. We touched on it last time, but I was just showing the audience some of these articles. All of this stuff is happening at the same time. It's taking place like a domino. And there are certain topics, like you said, that nobody's talking about. We pretty much just moved into a world government financially. Finally, they've wanted it for a long time. And, you know, hidden in this uh, relief bill is this 180-day countdown, which started when they passed the bill, for disclosure. And at the same time, you see all of these new articles popping up about how easy it is to probably find extraterrestrial life. And how prepared are you for the transition into the grand solar minimum? Are you prepared for emergencies? Our friends at My Patriot Supply do have long-term storable and emergency food supplies. The two-week grab-and-go food crate or the four-week emergency food supply they also have a large range of water filtration and items you can use yourself to get ready, such as Mylar bags, oxygen packs, things you can use to DIY your own long-term storable foods, and a host of different survival items that you might not have thought about during your preparations. Use the Adapt2030 link in the description box below, and while you're there, take a look at the selection of heirloom seeds. Because you're going to have to grow some of your own food moving forward into the new Eddie Grand Solar Minimum. Take back your peace of mind by knowing that you're prepared when others might not be. You know, you got these Harvard people talking about there was no way the asteroid that came through in 2017, they're saying there's no way that was a natural object because it changed direction on its own. Now, I don't know about that. There's a lot of mechanics in space that pull and twist and contort on things, gases evaporating, light pushing off objects. But let's just say for a minute that our government has accepted the idea, or at least wants us to accept the idea, that extraterrestrials are not only real, but they'll be here soon. And I mean real soon. And now we're seeing things that we've never seen before. They're trying to bring back frozen people to life. They're making robots out of organic mass, basically a brain that's running robots. And we have some of the most amazing robots coming out right now. At least they're finally showing you what they can do. I don't think people really understand what they're for, but people are getting to see how fast they move how long they can last on a battery now, stuff they told us was impossible just a couple of years ago. Now they're coming out with all these technologies to the point where they can tell you anything is in the sky. And, and let me put it to you this way too. If you were an alien species, let's say you had no gender, but we know from the animal kingdom on earth and from funguses that some life forms have a totally unique and totally different way of reproducing than mammals. If you came in and you wanted to deal with a planet that had hundreds of different governments on it and was based on a traditional duality, I wouldn't say that they would be offended, but it would be hard for human beings to accept something so foreign. So if you were the powers to be on Earth, what would you do? You would incrementally get people used to these ideas that are not natural to biology on Earth in the mammal kingdom so that maybe we'd be a little more acceptant of an entity of some kind or another, whether it be technological or biological. And I th think it, that's exactly the road we're going down. That's why they're wanting you to get used to being hungry. They're wanting you to get used to not being able to travel. That's the state of mentality that they want you in. And I ask you, if something sci-fi like that was going to happen, are we not in the exact right time for them to disclose these kind of new ideas for a new world? What if you had to share your world with a couple more billion entities that are unlike you? 
do you think that they would tell you that you need to start rationing your food because we have to share or, or things like that? Now, they, these are just wild ideas. I'm just putting them at you, David. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm wondering how their biology and physiology would work ingesting, you know, earth-based plant foods or earth-based uh, diets. Who says they haven't been here before and this is just the next round in the rodeo? Because if I was going to do it, I would make it coincide with what I talked about in the beginning, the Blue Star Kachina. Now, it, no, those of you who might not understand this, in 2022, there is a comet called K2 2017C. It is a blue comet already. As far out as the sun, it had the furthest distance of interaction with our star, our sun, when it started to glow. Now, you think about before, the furthest that had ever been interacting with the sun that we know of, it was 20x further away than that. It's not like double the distance of the furthest ever interaction where a comet started to glow because it was interacting with the sun. No, no, not double that. 20x further out. Like, they've been watching this thing coming in for years, plural, because it started glowing out there. It's going to arrive here next year. And the thing is, it's going to be blue, and by all conjecture, the measurements they have so far, it's going to be the size of the full moon in the middle of the daylight hours. And at night, it's going to cover one-eighth of the sky, or something, you know, very large with the halo and whatnot. You'll be able to see it where it's going to take up an enormous part of the sky. So visible across both hemispheres. And what you're talking about would be the perfect time to introduce this, that the aliens are traveling with the star, it's the blue star Kachina, it's the Hopi legends, it's world's ending, look at all the landslides. They're going to ride on top of this natural cycle of all these earth changes saying that we need the aliens to help, they have a technology that can stabilize our earth's crust. They're going to do something like this if they do decide to go the alien route. But with this blue star Kachina, I could absolutely see the world flipping out, completely psychosis mode. Going, well, this is the end of the world, and they'll take any kind of hope or any kind of thing or event or solution that will help make it easier to get through this. So what do you think that would be? I think you're touching on something I haven't really thought about before. It's ironic, too, that this thing's going to be back here around Earth, and it'll be at the same time. It'll be at the winter solstice. Yeah, I was just showing them the orbit there. So it'll come right by Earth December 21st, 2022. So that'll be two years of the sky having celestial events. And there's no doubt in my mind that people in the past knew or at least believed that these were really significant signs of cycles changing. And I think that we should take heed the same way that our ancestors did. And by all accounts of society, everything is flipping on its head. So when they're telling you, in the near future that there's a new entity that we have to deal with and we have to be careful. And the main thing that humans would have to worry about with contact with extraterrestrials is some kind of miscommunication or offense that we gave it. Cause we have no idea what kind of culture or instincts another alien entity would have. So it would seem that anything that we do could be offensive. When you go on the technological trip, like I was saying a minute ago, they are bombarding our society faster than ever with new algorithms, technologies, and things to learn. And you know this because every year you go get a new phone, you have to relearn the software. You have to relearn the apps. And anything old and obsolete, they delete it and they make the new hardware not work with the old software. And another thing that does is send lots of information down the memory hole never to be seen again uh, because it doesn't jive with the new technologies. At the same time, we have other billionaires telling us to put a chip in our head to protect us from the AI. What AI are they talking about? I'll protect you. All you got to do is put this chip in your head and connect directly to the internet. How about that? If you were worried about getting an algorithm and you know software um, interacting with your biological software, I think the last thing you'd want to do, put a chip in your head, but that's just my opinion. Well, then, like you said, you know, once the software doesn't sync with the hardware, what if they do? They erase all of your memory out of there and then reinstall something? 
So you're going to lose all your memories up to this point because the new hardware doesn't sync with the software. And okay, we got to just go re reboot the entire thing back to zero. Maybe I didn't uh, talk about it right. The memory that I'm talking about is not the memory on your phone and the old apps. The memory is your genetic memory. You know how all these people talk about accessing the Akashic record and uh, previous lives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what they're really talking about is genetic memory because genes hold the most complex information of anything we've ever discovered. You can put more information in genes than anything else, and they'll last millions of years, this information. Now, do you think it's really a good idea to go in there and start moving around uh, components of the original software from the manufacturer? On top of that, if there was a new species on Earth, do you think we might need to alter our food and our water so that they could also eat it? Maybe, you know, make some genetically modified organisms that sit better with their palate? And also the atmosphere, too. Perhaps there was too much oxygen in the atmosphere, but they needed a higher balance of some other particulates. And you notice factories, and I never understood this. This is the thing that really has been getting to me for the last few years. They've been yipping and yapping, the globalists and all these people, and they're saying, oh, you got to quit burning coal, you got to do this. And I'm like, okay, wait a second. You had Nikola Tesla with all these magnetic motor inventions that I've seen firsthand in Zagreb in Croatia. You've had those since the early 1900s, but nobody wanted to go magnetic motor. Nobody wanted to go that direction for power generation using Earth's magnetic field. They all wanted to burn things for the last couple hundred years. And now suddenly this year, last year, they're, oh, we got to stop burning stuff. Well, wait a second. Why didn't you introduce magnetic motors five or 10 years ago so we could get on the, no, no, I still got to do it this way. I still got to buy a centralized. No, we got to go nuclear. Oh, we got to do this. It's almost as if we're being terraformed here too with the atmospheres being changed chemically for something else to breathe it. Because you notice there's more stuff in the air. For the human, for us, like the indigenous human on the planet, the atmosphere is going the wrong direction. But something new that's coming in that needs to terraform to get a new atmosphere installed seems that they've been working with the same people for the last couple hundred years. So you need to really wonder, is it a brand new entity coming? Or have they been here for several hundred years in advanced ships and know that the mothership's coming behind in a few hundred years and you got to terraform everything, but will give you the ultimate riches and wealth and make you the most prosperous, powerful elite on the planet. You just need to go with us and do what we say. And then we've got a terraform planet. Now we got GM foods. And you could see all these other things. They want to restrict water. They want to restrict, restrict green vegetation. It's like they want to barcode all life. There's a lot of possibilities. I never thought about this alien aspect of it until you brought it up. And then there's one more thing. We always get these depictions of different extraterrestrials, whether they be... Uh... You know, they, they got the Nordic ones, they got the insect ones, but the most common is this little gray alien that looks like it's wearing a big pair of sunglasses. Now, there's another thing going on right now that nobody's really talking about in the mainstream is the go-ahead from several different countries to start spraying more and more nanoparticles in the atmosphere to literally, in his words, not mine, dim the sun. And on top of that, they're telling people to stay inside more. Every single thing that the governmental forces on Earth are doing are pushing humans in a direction that's not beneficial to the human being. Say you were an alien and you were coming here, and where you come from, you live further from the sun, or maybe your orbit goes around a lot longer, and you're not used to or can't deal with the bright, sun, especially during a magnetosphere collapse. What would you need then? Well, you'd want to dim the sun. You'd want to keep people inside. On top of that, you may have answered your own question about magnetic motors. I'm not a scientist, but how would a whole society built on free magnetic energy and transportation to other things, how would those machines fare with the magnetosphere collapsing or a change in the magnetic field on a solar system level or on a, on a galactic level. You kind of clued me into something there. What you mentioned about the dimming sun, if we are going into a new glaciation phase, 
the sun would step down to an ember in the sky. And when I say that, I truly mean this. I mean, the way they've done the reconstructions on sphere around the sun, the way the, the sun holds state in its plasma interaction. We're not talking about the traditional what you think is something's burnt in a, in a fusion way down in there. Uh, the, this is an externally powered star. If you think about the current inflow into it, and we're talking about hundreds of thousand year cycles here. We're not talking about a thousand year cycle, 10,000 year cycle. That's way, way too short. You got to realize the Earth's natural state 90% of the time is in a glaciation state, meaning a re way reduced, incredibly reduced solar output state where the sun in the sky would literally look like a coal ember up there. So maybe these things that you're talking about need to leave the Earth for 10,000 years because it's too bright, the sunshine, the magnetic field's too strong, there's a lot of things going on. But we only get this interglacial phase, the switch between the two, 90,000 years of ice, 10,000 years of warmth. 90,000 years of ice, 10,000 years of warmth. So if you're an advanced society and you understand the cycles of our Earth, you say, all right, these 10,000 years are uninhabitable with the big eyes or whatever you want to talk about. Step forward into the 90,000 years. And you wonder why they would, wouldn't come down and wipe everybody out. Like you see all these space movies where they have the lasers and boom, like day after tomorrow. Or no, it was, day after, it was uh, Independence Day. And all these others where they just come down and they wipe everything out with their advanced technology. It makes no sense why they would try to have to do all these little hop, step, skip things, you know, to get us to maybe it's all to transform the atmosphere for them. So when they get here, they're perfectly in sync with things and the food's already GM. This video is brought to you by our friends at TrueLeafMarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet. 